Hello and welcome to this video. Today we want to build something like this. A documentation Q&A chatbot powered by embeddings, vector similarity search and chat GPT. So that if we have a question, for example, how do I add embeddings to my project in Refinery, I can ask the system, which will then retrieve context from a vector database and puts that context with, together with the question into chat GPT and retrieves an answer. For example, here. To add embeddings to your project in Refinery, you can go to any project settings page and see the download models button and so on and so forth. We're gonna build this. It's actually quite easy with today's tools. So let's jump into it. We're gonna have the following structure. First, some information about what is the workflow, the requirements, technology stack, and so on. And after that, we will get into the implementation part. There will be timestamps to this video. So if you're more interested to jump directly into the implementation, go ahead. This is the general workflow of how this would work, um, of the, how this use case would work, chat with your documentation. You would, you the user would have a question. This would then be directed to some mediator who redirects this question to an embedder. This embedding model then retrieves a vector representation of that question which gets queried in a vector database to retrieve the context. So a vector basically gets put into the vector database and said, give me, for example, the top five um, most similar entries. And in this vector database, you would have your documentation embedded already. Then the five nearest neighbors, for example, with cosine similarity would be retrieved back to the mediator. And now you would have the question, a little prompt around it, and the context, which will be sent to a large language model. Here, in this case, for example, from OpenAI. This large language model, then given the prompt and the context, gives you an answer that will then be displayed back to the user. This is the general workflow of how this would work. The requirements for what we're going to do today is really basic. You're going to need your documentation, of course. Um, you're going to need an OpenAI API key because we're going to use ChatGPT, um, namely GPT 3.5 Turbo, as our language model. And we're going to use the product stack of Kern AI, where you just need to have an account registered, which you can sign up for at app.kern.ai. This is the workflow and technologies that we're going to use. It looks a little bit complicated at first sight, but I'm quickly going to go over it and we're going to implement it later. So this is kind of important to understand. We're using Gradio as our front end because it's really simple and Python based. We're going to use Fast API as our backend service. We're going to use Gates as our API layer to Refinery where we have all our data. Basically in Refinery, we put in the documentation, which is then embedded with Hugging Face transformers and saved in a Quadrant vector database. This all happens in Refinery. We have a nice UI um, with it, which is really simple and really easy to understand. So it looks complicated, but as we will see in a minute, it's really easy. Then it would work like this. We ask the question in the Gradio front end. The question gets redirected to the Fast API backend service, where it gets redirected to the Gates API. The Gates API forwards this question to Refinery, where the question is embedded using the Hugging Face Transformer to get a vector representation. This vector is then fed in Refinery in the Quadrant database and queried for similar records, so similar documentation entries that are the context. The context gets then returned through the Gates API to our Fast API server. The Fast API server will also have some prompt built in that we are gonna append the context to and send it to OpenAI. Then OpenAI will process it and give us the answer. The answer will then be displayed in the Gradio front end that we can observe with our own two eyes. This is the workflow that we're going to use. Um, looks complicated, is really simple in practice, and we will see that in a second. 
So let's jump into the fun part, the implementation. I already created a folder for this project, which is called docs chatbot. And in it, I already have the documentation in JSON format. We use markdown MDX files for our documentation. So this was really easy to retrieve. And if we look at it, we can see that it is a, just a JSON where each individual entry has just the key content and the value is one paragraph of your documentation. We will need this format to upload it to Refinery, which we're gonna do now. We are now at app.kern.ai. And as you can see, we have no project yet. So let's create one. Let's call that box chatbot and select our file, drag it here and click proceed. Automatically, Refinery will add a running ID to your data so that you can filter it more easily in the system. What we now need is just an embedding. As we are doing asymmetric similarity search with a question and a whole paragraph, a whole context paragraph, we're gonna use sentence transformers, namely MS Marco Distilbert Base version 4. Which is really nice about Refinery, you can just copy the string over here from Hugging Face, then go back to Refinery and add it as an embedding. So the content is the attribute that we had, and we're just gonna put this string in here and click Add Embedding. The embedding is now processed, so we can head over to Gates to activate the API endpoint. So that we're gonna go to Gates. Here we already have Docs Chatbot currently disconnected. We're gonna click on it and open the config and say we wanna activate similarity search for this particular embedding and start the service. Now a new container is created. The A API status is now connected and we can basically also test the API right here. So we're gonna input, for example, what is a labeling task in Refinery to test this endpoint? We want the sample. And here we can see just some results. And here we, which is the most important thing is the similar records that we have under this embedding. And here's a short explanation um, from the documentation that we can use as context for our language model. Now Gates is all set up. The only thing that we're gonna need is to retrieve the API key, because if you can see in the example code, we will always need um, an API key for Gates to interact with. For that, we're going to head over to Refinery, go to the admin panel and add a new token. We're going to call that read and write one month. That's fine. Docs chatbot example and add the token. Now, this is really important. Copy this token now because afterwards you will not be able to see it again. Then you would have to create a new token. So copy it now and I will show you in a second where to insert it into the repository. We will now head over to the implementation of this workflow where I took more of a scripted approach. So the information will be a little denser than before. The good thing is you don't have to actually code along. All the code will be in a GitHub repository that is linked below this video in the video description. Get your IDE ready and let's begin. First, we open the command prompt and create a new Python environment, which in my case is done with Anaconda. After that, we will activate this environment and install all the requirements, namely OpenAI, so we can use the API of GPT models, Radio for an easy to implement Python frontend, FastAPI as our Python backend, and python.env for storing our keys as environment variables. Once that is done, we will go to our IDE and create a new file called .env. In here, we will declare three environment variables. Gates key will be the key we copied from our admin panel on Refinery. OpenAI org ID and OpenAI API key can be retrieved from your account settings on platform.openai.com. As we have seen in the previous technology stack explanation, 
we will need one file for the fast API server and one for the Gradio frontend. Let's do the frontend first and create a file called demo.py. To avoid those annoying red squiggly lines of our linter, we first select the right environment for our Python interpreter. After that, we can start by importing Gradio for the front-end interaction and requests for querying our back-end. Gradio interfaces expect a single function for all the inputs and outputs. So let's create a function called getAnswer that has a question as input. We will now query our non-existing backend on the fast API default port 8000 with that question. Then print the response for debugging and finally turn the response into a JSON format to return the result of that query. Now that we have a function that retrieves an answer for our question, let's put together a Gradio interface to interact with it. For that we will use the interface class that requires a callable function and the corresponding inputs and outputs. The question input is of type text and the output of the language model will be marked down. Let's now add a title, a description to make it look nice and lastly we will disable the flagging mechanism of Gradio. Flagging can be used to save inputs and outputs into a CSV log file but as it adds an ugly button to our UI we're trying to avoid that. As we will calling the script from the command line we will add the obligatory if name equals main and launch the interface inside of it. We are now ready to start the front end, so let's open a new command prompt, activate the environment and start the front end by running python demo.py. You could also run gradio demo.py for automatic reloads once you made changes to the code, but this code has been battle tested by me and there's absolutely no way we screwed something up, I promise. We can now input important questions to our documentation, like what is the meaning of life, which ironically will load forever. And as I don't have 7.5 million years time to wait for an answer that might be just two disappointing digits, let's create the backend of our demo using fast API. First we will create a new file called server.py. After that we will import all the required libraries like fast API, OpenAI and the load.env function from .env, which we will use to load our environment variables. As we will need it in a second, we now declare the current project ID as a constant. To find the ID, visit your project in Refinery and copy it from the URL. After that, we load our API keys into environment variables and save them to constants. Those constants can now be used to configure the OpenAI module. Here we also create our fast API server and save it to the variable app. As we don't want to clutter our route later, let's define a helper function called getSimilarRecords that takes the question as input. Here we will call the gates API to retrieve similar records, just like we saw previously in the gates UI. From there we can also copy most of this code. The first thing we need is the URL where our project ID is required. Then we will define the headers where the gates API key comes into play. To retrieve similar records to our question, we mock an example data point and post that to the gates API. Feel free to add error handling later, but for now we will just turn that response into a JSON and retrieve the similar records object. This object has the embedding names as keys and then lists of similar record objects as values. So to retrieve the similar records of the first and in our case only embedding, we will use the first key to access this object. What is now left is to return the contents for each similar record object as we are not interested in their other attributes, for example running ID. Once we got that helper function, we will now define the actual API route getAnswer, which also has the question as input. First, we will use the helper function to gather our context and add some print statements around it to observe the process later. If we found similar records above a certain threshold, the context list will contain more than zero entries. To send this context to OpenAI, we need to join all the paragraphs together and clip it to not exhaust the context window of GPT 3.5 Turbo. Next, we create a chat completion where we will specify the model, 
and messages to that model. The first message is a system message, which helps set the behavior of the assistant. After that, we add our user message that contains the question and the clipped context. Finally, we set the temperature to zero as we don't want the model to get creative. The API returns a certain format that we will need to disassemble a bit to retrieve our answer, which we will then return as the result. If we could not retrieve any similar paragraphs, we will just return a message saying to try again with a more precise question. Now save the server, open a new terminal, activate the conda environment and start the server by typing uvcorn server colon app. As you can see, the server is now running on port 8000. You can test the fast API server by heading to localhost 8000 slash docs and click on try it out for the get answer route. If we now input how to add a labeling task in Refinery, you can see the results after a few seconds. After validating the backend, we can now head over to the Gradio frontend and ask the same question. After some seconds, we will get the answer displayed on the right. If you run into any issues, just restart both the servers and try again. Awesome! Now we can chat with our documentation. If you want to improve this pipeline, you could experiment with other embeddings in Refinery, as the whole Hugging Face ecosystem is at your fingertips. You could also integrate a continuous chat context with, for example, Langchain to have longer conversations and ask follow-up questions. For cost efficiency, we used GPT 3.5 Turbo. You could also try and experiment with GPT 4 to see if the answers improve. We hope you had fun and learned something new. Don't forget to like and subscribe as we're doing content like this regularly. You can also join our Discord community server to ask questions about our open source products or just chat with like-minded people. If you don't want to miss what's happening in AI and the NLP world, consider subscribing to our newsletter. It's free. All the relevant links will be in the video description. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.